He knows my name. Yes, He knows my name. He knows my name. Yes, He knows my name. Oh, how He walks with me. Yes, oh, how He talks with me. Oh, how He tells me that I am His own. You know my name. As you know my name. Welcome to Christchurch East Greenwich for our Sunday worship. My name is Margaret and I'm the vicar. As usual, I'm going to be joined by other church members who'll be leading our sung worship, reading and praying, all pre-recorded in their own homes. Today is the second Sunday in our autumn series on the Difference course. Difference is a five session course that explores what it means to follow Jesus in the face of conflict and see transformation through everyday encounters, helping each of us to become people of reconciliation. As well as looking at the themes in our Sunday services, we're also going to be thinking about the topics in our midweek connect groups. So if you're not already in a connect group, please do think about joining one. Let me know if you'd be interested. There are groups meeting in sixes in real life and also groups meeting via Zoom. Today we're starting to think about crossing divides and how God invites us to see where fear and prejudice divide us from others and offers us opportunities to see others just as he does. It often feels like we live in a world of divides which cause fear, discomfort and prejudice in us and in our beliefs and attitudes towards others. This can cause walls and divides between us and others. Jesus lived in a world with the same sort of divides and power imbalances as we face today. So today we'll be hearing the story of Jesus and his encounter with a woman on the other side of a divide of those times. We'll also be watching a short film about a modern day encounter over divides. And Reverend Dom will be helping us to explore together how we can seek to cross divides in our own times and be equipped to be people of reconciliation. So as we join together in all our wonderful diversity to gather across all our divides to worship God this morning, we greet one another. The Lord be with you and also with you. We live in a divided and broken world where we long for God's presence with us. So as we turn to God in worship, we sing, hope is stirring, hearts are yearning for you. We long for you because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. Jim and the worship band will lead us in singing, praise is rising. Praise is rising, eyes are turning to you, we turn to you. Hope is stirring, hearts are yearning for you, we love. When 
when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God. So as we think today about crossing divides, we pause for a moment to remember the times that we make mistakes, where we don't seek to cross divides and where we allow prejudice and um, our own assumptions to build up walls that divide us from others. Let's pause for a moment. You have made us to be one family, yet we have divided humanity. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You were born a Jew to reconcile all people, yet we have brought disharmony amongst the races. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You rejoice in our differences yet we make them a cause of enmity. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue in prayer with our special prayer, the Collect for this Difference course. So let us pray. Loving God, fill us with your spirit now. Help us to be curious about others' stories, listening as often as we speak. Give us the courage to be present, 
engaging our whole and unique selves. Inspire us to reimagine what's possible, finding hope by glimpsing you at work. In Jesus' name, Amen. And now Zoe is going to read to us a story from the Bible about Jesus encountering a woman across a divide. Then we're going to hear from Sami, a Palestinian activist, and about how he crossed divides in his seeking to become a person of reconciliation. And then Reverend Dom is going to talk to us. Along with the theme Crossing Divides, I will be reading to you from the book of John, chapter 4, 1 to 30. And Jesus realized that the Pharisees were counting the baptisms that he and John had performed. Although his disciples, not Jesus, did the actual baptizing, they had posted the score that Jesus was ahead, turning him and John into rivals in the eyes of the people. So Jesus left the Judean countryside and went back to Galilee. To get there, he had to pass through Samaria. He came into Sychar, a Samaritan village that bordered the field Jacob had given his son Joseph. Jacob's well was still there. Jesus, worn out by this trip, sat down by the well. It was noon. A woman, a Samaritan, came to draw water. Jesus said, would you give me a drink of water, please? His disciples had gone to the village to buy food for lunch. The Samaritan woman, taken aback, asked, how come you, a Jew, are asking a Samaritan woman for a drink? Jews in those days would not be caught dead talking to Samaritans. Jesus answered, if you knew the gener generosity, Jesus answered, if you knew the generosity of God and who I am, you would be asking me for a drink and I would give you fresh living water. The woman said, Sir, you do not even have a bucket to draw with and this well is deep. So how are you going to get this living water? Are you a better man than our ancestor Jacob who dug this well and drank from it? He and his sons and livestock and passed it down to us. Jesus said, everyone who drinks this water will get thirsty again and again. Anyone who drinks the water that I will give will never thirst. Not ever. The water that I give will be an artesian spring within, gushing fountains of endless life. The woman said, sir. Give me this water so I will not ever get thirsty again. He said, go call your husband and then come back. I have no husband, she said. That's nicely put, I have no husband. You've had five husband and the man you're living with now isn't even your husband. You spoke the truth there, sure enough, Jesus said. The woman said, oh, so you're a prophet. Well, tell me this, our ancestors worshipped God at this mountain, but you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place for worship, right? Believe me, woman, the time is coming when you Samaritans will worship the Father, neither here at this mountain nor there in Jerusalem. You worship guessing in the dark. We Jews worship in the clear light of day. God's way of salvation is made available through the Jews. But the time is coming, it has in fact come, when what you are called will not matter and where you go to worship will not matter. It is who you are and the way you live that counts before God. Your worship must engage your spirit in pursuit of truth. That's the kind of people the Father is looking out for. Those who are simply and honestly themselves before him in their worship. God is sheer being itself spirit. Those who worship him must worship him out of their very beings, their spirits, their true selves in adoration. 
The woman said, I do not know about that. I do not know that the Messiah is coming. When he arrives, you will get the whole story. I am he, Jesus said. You do not have to wait any longer or look any further. Just then, the disciples came back. They were shocked. They could not believe he was talking with that kind of a woman. No one said what they were all thinking, but their faces did show it. The woman took the hint and left. In her confusion, she left her water pot. Back in the village, she told people all around, come see a man who knew all about the things I had done, who knows me inside out. Do you think this could be the Messiah? And they all went out to see for themselves. May God bless the reading of his word. Amen. We live under occupation. I grew up in a situation where we witnessed and experienced the occupation every single day of my life. My father was principal of an orphanage where the Israeli army would actually raid the orphanage. So it was a very direct experience of tear gas, rubber bullets, yelling, shouting, night raids that we had. And then for me, I grew up in this reality. And, and the narrative around this reality is that you are justified in your hatred and resentful towards them who are doing this to you. I could not understand how can you make peace with a people that want to destroy you. They don't even want to make peace with us. So as a Palestinian activist, I was very committed to nonviolent resistance to end occupation. But at the same time, I was always challenged with what is really this conflict about? Is there something hidden that we are not aware of that we need to address? But I never knew what it, what it was. And then American Jewish friends of mine invited me to this retreat called the Bearing Witness Retreat. And this retreat happens every year and they organize it in the death camps of Auschwitz and Bergenau in Poland. As Palestinians, we don't deny the Holocaust, but we don't affiliate ourselves with it. It's not our story, it's not our narrative. It has nothing to do with us. It's in the past. The reality of the occupation is what we live in now. Uh, but I decided to go there. And to be honest, that experience completely turned my life around. For several days, we toured the campus itself, the location itself, the death camp, and saw everything that happened there. At one point, three of us decided to do something that was very unique. Myself as a Palestinian Christian, an American Jew, and a Turkish Muslim decided to spend the night in what's called the children's bunker. And it's a November night, and we have all the warm clothes and blankets and sleeping bags, and we were freezing. And just to imagine what those children who had nothing went through and experienced. And that was, I think, one of the deepest experiences that I had in my life. And so my whole life was turned around by this experience. Unless we address the traumas of the communities of this land, we will never achieve any real sense of peace. We will always look towards the other with mistrust, with doubt, with having hidden agendas and hidden tensions that will limit any scope of peacemaking that we could do with them. Now, when I go to a checkpoint and I see an Israeli soldier with a gun, and he could even point this gun towards me, I would engage. I would ask the questions. Tell me your story. Tell me more about you. And so even if he's coming, <laughs> yelling at me and shouting at me, if there is an opportunity to create that space, this is what I do. You know, in science they say one case can make or destroy a whole theory. So if the theory that people have that Palestinians and Israelis hate each other, you need one example to show that this theory is wrong. And I've seen hundreds of examples that prove that this theory is wrong. Palestinians and Israelis are living in conflict 
are living in a time where there is hatred and resentment, but this is not embedded in us as a people. Jesus never said, negotiate a peace treaty with your enemy. He never said, resolve your conflict with your enemy. He never said, reach a political settlement with your enemy. You want to follow me? Then you follow my commandment. You love your enemy. And for me, that's become my journey. We live in a broken world that seeks to divide people and put barriers up. A world that encourages us to see the difference in people rather than the similarities. We live in a world that measures the gap between them and us. And we work out how safe it is to bridge that gap and to get involved. You see someone in the street that looks like they have all their worldly goods beside them and we measure the gap between one with a home and one without. We see somebody swaying on the path and slurring their words and we measure the gap between disability and what the world considers normal. And there's lots of other things too that can divide us and put barriers between us if we choose it. But it's not always our fault. As children we're brought up a certain way, as young people we're nurtured by our youth culture and social media, as adults we're persuaded by the news channels we choose. And our world does difference really well. You're either in or you're out, you're leave or remain, you're red or you're blue, you're BBC or ITV, positive or negative, you're rich or poor, you're legal or illegal, local or outsider. You have or have not, you're good or you're bad. And we judge even before we've blinked and certainly before we've become curious about the other that's in front of us. And then we meet this Jesus living in a land of divides and barriers. And Jesus shows us way of breaking down those things. At the well with the woman, he measures the gap between men talking with women, and he crossed it. He measures the gap between Jews and Samaritans, and he ignored it. He measured the gap between one who would hide in the midday heat to avoid her community. And he spoke to her with stories of love and life. He was curious about her when nobody else was interested in what she could share, about what made her difference, about how different she might be, but how similar she could be. And we find she's not that different at all. He was curious about what she needed and found that it was well within his power to give it. And maybe when we're curious about others, we find they're not a million miles away from us after all. Jesus was present to the failings of the people and the barriers that they built up. He was present to his own request of water and his own ability to give the water of life. He was present to her need for love and acceptance and acknowledgement. And when we are present to the needs of others, and to their need of love and value and place and purpose, we find that our stories overlap. And we find that them and us turns to me and we. And at that well, Jesus reimagines a time when the divides are crossed and the barriers are brought down, when all will worship wherever they want, and praises will rise whoever you are. And the woman reimagines a place where she is loved as much as anyone else, where she is accepted, regardless of her story, regardless of the things that are put in her way, regardless of what the, the world says is other. And when we reimagine someone in our streets, not as a pain or as a carbuncle in our community, but as a beautiful, loved child of God. We see the kingdom of God come closer still.
And when we reimagine our prosperity and satisfaction in the joy of all people, rather than the success and wealth of the one or the some, then we will see the world as Jesus saw it. So this week, be curious. Take time to consider the things that divide and split us. Take a moment to be curious about why those divides are there. Be present to your feelings. When your instinct says cross the road, ask yourself why. When your first thought is negative, try and work out where that comes from. Could you challenge yourself this week to cross a divide, to break down a barrier and see how it feels? Pray this week, like me, for those people, groups or situations that we would normally ignore or gloss over. Seek out stories of other people this week and maybe share something of your own story. Measure the gap and bridge those divisions. I believe difference can be good. It can be a blessing if only we seek to understand it and find out how it blesses others. Amen. In response to all that we've heard, we affirm our faith in the God who calls each of us to be part of his family. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. As we continue to live with the uncertainty of these challenging and strange times, it is easy to feel overwhelmed. In our next song, we're reminded to fix our eyes on Jesus, to let go my soul and trust in him. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. Through it all, through it all, it is well. Jim and the worship band will lead us in singing, It is well. Still know his 
This week, our This Time Tomorrow slot was recorded last weekend at the Christchurch East Greenwich Football Club, known as CCEGFC, at the CCEGFC Intra-Club Friendly, where two 11-a-side teams, both from our own club, played against each other in a sort of pre-season Intra-Club Friendly. It was a good and tight match. And after the match, Michael talked to Joe, the club manager and inspiration. So here they are chatting about CCEG FC. Then Patrick and Joshua will lead us in our prayers of intercession. Ready? Hi, Joe. Hey, Mike. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to speak. Yeah. What's happening here? So today is um, our Christchurch East Greenwich FC squad friendly so we're playing each other uh, we've grown the squad now as you know Mike to a lot of guys about 30 guys in total so um, yeah well, what is what is your role How so you... I'm uh, kind of uh, I guess the captain cap manager but more just the organizer so I help set it up and get the team together each week but, um, yeah and we play in a South London Christian League every Saturday um, to play other churches or youth groups or uh, Christian charities, those kind of groups, uh, all have football teams around South London. Yeah, well, what, what are your challenges and what are your joys? <laughs> uh, challenges is it's surprisingly hard to get uh, 14 men in one place at once. Yeah. Uh, it, it's really tough. Um, challenges as well is uh, keeping everyone happy now. We've got a bigger squad, so everyone wants to play. And the point of this team is, you know, a bit like the, a bit like the church, really, to be inclusive, to have everyone involved. Uh, but we're also competitive, so making that balance of, uh, you know, getting everyone involved, but also playing good teams is, is, is tough. The joys is just the joy of playing football, that kind of release, mental release. Um, the community, especially as well, is probably the biggest joy. Actually, the community, the chance of. It's like getting this little band of brothers together and meeting each other each week. And yeah, that's, that's the best thing. Fantastic. So how, how can we pray for you? I pray for us just to keep us safe, for one. Uh, we'd really appreciate um, prayers from everyone in the church. It's always a struggle to stay healthy and fit and non-injured. Um, and also just that we continue to grow and we, we negotiate those challenges I mentioned, that we, we stay representative of what the church is about. Uh, we kind of, you know, we're supposed to be a beacon, I think, for Christianity and for, for Christ in the, in, in the world. Um, that's what I want it to be, so I pray that we can continue to do that. Okay. 
Let's do it. Let's just pray for you. Okay. Dear God, we thank you for having Joe as our founder, as our manager, and as our team captain. And we're, we're happy that you're showing him with the blessings to be able to bring this ministry, this sport ministry, this missional community, where the lads, the men in our church can get together in this kind of a fraternity with camaraderie in a healthy way. And we want to thank you for this, Lord. We know that it is difficult to get everybody together. So we want to ask that everybody gives of themselves and listens to Joe and, and gets into the spirit of what we're trying to create here, this brotherhood, this fellowship. And we want to we want to ask you then for your guidance and for your help to maintain our status in this new league that we're going into. Hope, hopefully everybody will stay safe and, and we will play for the good spirit. The spirit that is in you, we want to have on the field and in these players. Again, thank you, Lord, for Joe and for this fraternity, Christ Church, East Greenwich FC. In Jesus' name we play. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Joe. In your mercy, we worship you today in spirit and in truth. As you said in your words, as you sat by Jacob's well, that a time will come when we will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. We believe that day is come. We take comfort in that we are assured that we are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. Like the Samaritan woman, we ask that you fill us with your spirit of kindness. Fill us with your living water of healing. We thank you for crossing and breaking the barriers of cultural divide between the Jews and the Samaritans. Most importantly, we thank you for our leaders at Christ Church East Greenwich. We thank you especially for our Vicar Margaret, who by your grace sees and uses cultural differences as a strength, not as a divider. Lord, in your mercy, as she navigates through these diverse cultural differences in our community, may you continue to bless her, protect her, and strengthen her in this noble responsibility you have bestowed upon her. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, in your mercy, deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, Lord, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let your kingdom come, Lord, in us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, in your mercy, as you touch the Samaritan woman and she ran into the village, to tell of your good news. We pray in your mercy to touch your people this morning with your living water. Lord, in your mercy, we present to you Liz Gardner, Ammonian Judge, Mary, William Hadley, Donna Holland, Helen, Tendai, 
Menes, Joanne Russell, Asa Savage, David Thompson, Tracy White, and Angela. Lord, in your mercy. We also commit the church special project that we support here at Christ Church East Greenwich in Tanzania to prevent the transmission of HIV from mother to child. Lord, in your mercy, we pray that you continue to bless as we keep your living water flowing through this project in Tanzania. Amen. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We draw our prayers to a close with the words of the Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We have been reminded today of the call to cross divides and to become people of reconciliation in the world. In our final song, we're invited to bless and worship the Lord our God, whatever our circumstances. The sun comes up. It's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Jim and the worship band are going to lead us in singing. Bless the Lord, O my soul.
Our final blessing. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love now and always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Just a few notices. We've just um, finished our service when we've been thinking about the second week of the Difference Course, Crossing Divides, and that will also be continued in our small groups, our connect groups, this week. So if you're not already in a connect group and you'd like to be in one, they meet um, in real life in small groups of six, and also some of them via Zoom and the, they meet in the evenings and we also have some daytime ones. Let me know if you'd like to join one, even if just for these last four weeks of the Difference course. This afternoon we have our Sunday children and young people's groups, or rather I should say today we do, because Sparrows has already met at 9.15. Junior Church is at 11 o'clock in a few minutes time and Sunday Huddle this afternoon at 4 p.m and they're on the second and fourth Sundays of the month. So this afternoon, not next week, but then again on the 10th of October. Sunday at seven today, Rob Hornby is leading a simple service centred around a talk on the theme of going on after giving up in the context of worship and prayer. That's happening in real life at church, and we will also aim to broadcast it as we did last week. Sunday 10am remains online for the time being, especially in light of the likelihood of further lockdown measures in London. However, there is an exemption from the rule of six for public worship, which does mean that our services in church can continue, of course, ensuring appropriate social distancing, which limits numbers and hygiene measures to keep everyone safe. So if you do come to church for a service, please come in through the glass doors from Trafalgar Road, not through the forum. Please remember to wear a face covering, although we do have some spare, should you forget. Um, Sunday at seven is happening every Sunday evening in church. Next week, it's a reflective and meditative service with informal Holy Communion led by me on the theme of God's goodness at harvest. On Tuesday mornings at 8.30, we have morning prayer in church. Everyone is welcome. 
please come in through the garden doors for this very short, it's sort of 20, 25 minutes time of prayer every Tuesday morning. Wednesday lunchtimes at 12.30pm, we have a simple service of Holy Communion. Again, everyone is welcome. Please do contact me or one of the church wardens, Michael or Susan, should you have any concerns for yourself or for anyone else, we'd be glad to hear from you and to be in contact with people for prayer or pastoral visits or whatever is needed. Have a very peaceful and blessed week. Amen. Far be it from me to not believe Even when my eyes can't see and this mountain that's in front of me will be thrown into the midst of the sea. And through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. And through it all, through it all, it is well. And through it all, soul and trust in him the waves and winds still know his name so let go my soul and trust in him the waves and winds still know his name the waves and winds